So recently I decided to dive into Unity, giving myself one week to check it out. I've always wondered what a 3D version of my top-down games could look like. I've been making 2D games for a pretty long time. I specifically have been working on a new RPG about programmers behind the scenes for a while. I wanted to try out some kind of proof of concept of getting this game into 3D, maybe using a perspective and art style like some of my favorite top-down 3D games. Now, this isn't a commitment to make a game like this, I just wanted to spend a few days trying it out and seeing if it's a viable path to move forward with. This is also a quick intro video I wish I had before getting started with Unity. We'll cover the steps I used to learn it and other considerations to think about when just getting into 3D work for the first time. So if you're thinking about diving into Unity, I hope this will help you get started a little bit quicker. As always, if you haven't already, please subscribe for more game dev content and let's get right to it. For absolutely getting started with 3D game development, I wanted to take a well-traveled path. If you Google, for example, 3D game development, Unity is definitely by far the thing that comes up the most. It's really stable and has been around for a long time, so it's easy to navigate any version changes. You do have to create an account to get started. This already felt a little different than using an open source solution, but Unity is a business. The first moments look like this big blank screen of nothingness, except this floating camera icon. You can add basic shapes to the scene, and like most tutorials will start with a floor, which could be a cube that you stretch out and then apply a basic green material to, or any color you want. You can then drop other things on the scene to quickly represent player elements, or other abstract placeholders for things in the game. I started by following along with some excellent YouTube tutorials on the very basics. It was a lot of pausing the video, making a little change in Unity, resuming the video, pausing the video again, making a change in Unity, trying my own things here and there, but mostly staying on track with the tutorial. It took a while to get through a single video, but I think for me, that's just the best way to learn. Here's a quick rundown of what it's like to actually use Unity. Anything happening on screen is organized into a scene tree. Photoshop style, you have layers of different elements that can nest. You put building blocks called game objects in this tree. That's like a single entity in the game. But you can also nest and group game objects together for better organization. Within a game object, you pop open an inspector and add components of functionality and behavior. These could be things like the mesh shape of an object, the material being used, collision detection hitboxes, maybe something to opt into physics and gravity, and of course, attaching your own custom code. And we'll get to more coding in just a second. Individual branches of the tree can be saved as prefabs, which are effectively little reusable chunks. Say you have an enemy truck, you can configure your enemy once, save it as a prefab, and then instantiate that enemy anywhere in the game. That way, if that enemy appears more than once, you don't have to redo everything to make it happen. Sometimes those instances are simply added to the tree and the UI, or you can instantiate them on the fly, like spawning enemies. Again, this concept feels right at home coming from other game engines and component-based web development. Let's get into the coding part now. Individual script files are attached to game objects as components in the inspector. The programming language used in Unity is c -sharp. I typically write games in JavaScript, so I wasn't totally sure what to expect here. But all in all, I thought it was actually pretty easy to pick up c -sharp. It takes a little bit of object-oriented knowledge, but the default scripts Unity gives you are so good, it's pretty easy to just follow the patterns. Since it's strongly typed, any key you press is going to greet you with some kind of auto-completion suggestion. That made it pretty quick to explore the different methods and things you can call on any given type. But of course, it took a lot of Googling and existing tutorials to figure out kind of the proper way to do things. There's a learning curve to any programming language, so don't hear me wrong. But the C-sharp part here is nothing to be afraid of. Speaking of IDEs, I chose to pick up a license for JetBrains Rider. I'm a huge fan and user of their other IDEs and other areas of software development. They all feel the same in terms of UI and keyboard shortcuts, so as a full-time WebStorm developer, I was immediately right at home. The community default is definitely Visual Studio proper, but it's pretty easy to switch to VS Code or whatever other editor you want to use. I was pleasantly surprised to find how seamless the communication was as well, where the IDE will automatically know things about your Unity project. For example, you can create uniquely named tags and apply them to game objects to specifically categorize them, like this kind of tag goes on something that can damage the player. Anytime you do something in Unity, the IDE kind of syncs up with it, so it already knows the names of values that you've created in the Unity app itself. Just seeing it there in front of you as an autocomplete option feels snappy and reassuring. One thing I really appreciated right off the bat about Unity is that multiple script components can actually be added to the same game object. This makes it a bit more natural to keep script files really small and focused on only one thing. There's nothing necessarily stopping you from taking this approach in other engines or frameworks, but often it's kind of on you to proactively manage that and to stay organized. The design of Unity allowing multiple scripts naturally kind of encourages you to operate this way, and I found it really nice to work with. Now after you've arranged such a gorgeous scene like this one, you need a way to play it. 
Unity has game and scene mode. You can run the game at any time, and it's fairly quick, at least on my machine, to boot up. You can use the controls and navigate the world right here to emulate a full build of the game. One catch is you have to remember to not be in play mode when you're tweaking things in the inspector. If you do, it'll live update right in the real game, which is really handy for debugging or figuring out the values you want to use for a thing but those changes will revert as soon as you stop running the game. There were a couple times where I was making changes thinking I was in regular mode, but I was actually accidentally in play mode, and then I lost those changes. No big deal, they're little things, but I do think the Godot engine's remote tab makes this a little more clear, since you have kind of two separate trees, two different environments. It's pretty clear which one is the live inspector of the game and which one is your project. There are some tiny delays between editing a script and that little sync to happen back to the editor. It feels quite a bit less fluid than simpler setups where you just have code and screen, of course. Having a second monitor is probably a good call, if possible. I was using a single monitor all week when working on this, and it was fine, but the windows are so big it's kind of hard to see everything all at once. If you can swing it, a multiple display approach probably goes a long way. Now that I'd followed some tutorials and felt pretty comfortable with the different pieces and everything that was going on, it was time to rebuild some of my top-down features into this Unity project. I reached for some pre-built 3D models, some from the Unity Asset Store. Many of these are free to download. I did buy one pack of low-poly city models. Some of the characters are also from this site called Mixamo. This site is by Adobe and it allows you to browse and download different 3D models. All have a bunch of animations ready to go. I was pretty impressed by this. It only requires an Adobe login, but otherwise it's totally free to use. And I thought it was surprisingly nice. To get them in the game, you just drag and drop them from your project's file explorer into the scene. From there, you can go ahead and add your physics and movement components. So for starters, I wanted to recreate simple walking and talking to people with a dialogue box, but in this 3D world. So I put a simple character on the screen and used an animator component to show the correct walking animation when the keys were held down, when the character was actually moving. Similar to some of the things I've talked about in previous videos, I spun up a quick camera system. The camera just follows the character around with a slight lurping ease. I thought working with a 3D camera was gonna be way more complicated than 2D work, but it was surprisingly similar. This very basic example just tells the camera which position to lock onto. Unity gives you really nice controls to adjust the distance and angle. I was then able to reuse the model part for a demo NPC in the map. He uses the same walking and standing animations. Pretty much all the visual stuff was able to be directly reused, but he simply doesn't have the movement functionality component. And the camera doesn't follow him. The camera only follows the hero. Now back to the hero, I put a little detector area in front of him that locks with his movement. So this detector cube's always hanging out right in front of the hero's face. When it overlaps with something interactable, like an NPC that could be talked to, the NPC then sends up a signal to an action manager. And then when you hit the spacebar, if the action manager says you have someone to talk to, it'll create a text message prefab, which again, a prefab is one of those pre-made components. Make it once, be able to use it a bunch of times. And this typewriter effect is basically already built into Unity. I just had to opt into it with some code. I do want to say that I heavily use ChatGPT to help figure out a good approach for implementing all the functionality here, especially with some of the 3D rotation stuff and some of the types that Unity was expecting in C-sharp, which again is kind of new to me. It was just a lot faster for me to ask the bot questions rather than piecing together lots of forum posts. It really saved me a lot of time. Now that I had some basic functionality working, I wanted this project to use my own characters. I have a bunch of 2D pixel versions, but what could these characters look like as 3D models? Again, I had an idea in mind of the character style I wanted to make, but basically no experience with 3D modeling. This was the next big thing to tackle. Generally speaking, creating 3D models happens outside of Unity. That's where you'd reach for a program like Maya or Blender. I downloaded Blender and followed a few tutorials to get started with it. This was approachable enough for me with really basic shapes like boxes. But once I got into creating nuanced character heads and that kind of thing, that's where I realized how much I really suck at this. Though I also tried this program called Blockbench, which is really nice. It's kind of like Blender, but it's very simplified and sort of designed to make low poly pixel arty work. The style here wasn't exactly what I was going for, but it was way more approachable of a program, and I was able to make a few things pretty quickly. One general gripe that came up is that all of these programs have slightly different controls and hotkeys for navigating the 3D space. There are some uniform UI conventions that all the programs use, which really help, but the panning, zooming, moving the camera, they're all just a little bit different. I guess once you lock in your programs that you like, you get really good at them, but I was still firmly in the noob stage across the board. My word of advice with this stuff is just make sure you give yourself a ton of time to get started. By this point in my trial week, I was fatigued from following so many tutorials that I just wanted to get in there and start tinkering and making stuff. 
But 3D modeling is an entirely new and unique skill on its own. There's really no substitute for hours of practice. And because the applications are so complicated, it really does make sense to follow some tutorials when you're just getting started. But again, in the meantime, the Unity Asset Store is full of amazing things you can use. So I kind of sidelined this effort and continued to just use pre-made models in Unity. I promised to give myself way more dedicated time to only work on the 3D modeling part, but it was such a potential rabbit hole, I wanted to get back to the game development side. And if we get serious about making a game in this style, we're definitely going to need to hire out some 3D modelers to help us. So in general, the first week of Unity was really great. As far as conclusions go, I still haven't committed to making a game in this style. For one thing, I'm not really sure if I want my next game to depart from 2D yet anyway. I really like that style as it is, and there's so much more that could be done with it. But on the 3D side, I'm really happy with my experience with Unity. Now I feel like I know how it all works, and I'm excited to build something with it soon. So let me know in the comments below how you like Unity, maybe how you like it compared to using other engines, or if you're just interested in trying it out for the first time. Our Discord game development community is also a great place to chat about these things. I had fun chatting with everybody about Unity as I was working on this. I got a lot of help from the group as well. That's all for this one. Thanks so much for watching and subscribing. I'll catch you next time.